Welcome to the first lesson of the series called Linear Functions. Hi there, my name is Dylan and in this lesson called an introduction to linear functions we will be introducing various ways to analyze linear functions and then in the remainder of this series we will concentrate on analyzing graphs and the formulae of linear functions. By the end of this lesson you should be able to analyze linear functions using formulae and tables and recognize formulae of linear functions. Do you remember that a function describes the relationship between variables in a situation where the answer depends? But what do I mean by saying where the answer depends? Well think about this for a moment. How much does it cost you to use a telephone per month? Is it 10 Rand? Is it 50 Rand? Is it 200 Rand? Well obviously that answer depends on the number of calls you make and the length of time of each of those calls. So for example, if I were to make one short call, I'd pay a lot less than if I made several calls of a longer duration. Now we call the cost and the length or duration of these calls variables. Now it's important for you to remember what a variable is. Variable means that the value can change or vary. Remember, the cost of your telephone account depends on the duration of your calls. So there's very definitely a relationship between the cost and the duration. As the duration changes, so the cost will change. So there is a function relationship between the cost of using your telephone and the duration of the calls that you make. And we can represent this relationship using a flow diagram. And let's say, for instance, that the cost of each call is 80 cents per minute. The duration of the calls is the input variable and the cost is the output variable because the cost depends on how long the calls are. The input variable or duration of calls is multiplied by 80 cents to give the output variable, namely the cost of the calls. Now usually there is also a fixed cost involved and in this case we're going to consider the cost of renting a telephone line from the telephone company which we're going to call Telecall. Say it costs 20 Rand per month to rent the phone line. To find the total cost per month we must add this fixed cost to the cost of making calls. So in the end our completed flow diagram will look like this. The input variable or the duration of the calls is multiplied by 80 cents. Then we add another 20 Rand which is the fixed cost. This gives us the output variable, namely the total cost per month for using a telephone. Now we're ready to start calculating some costs, but as you know we cannot add numbers until they are expressed in the same units. Take a look at what I mean. The cost of our calls is being expressed as a cents value, while the cost of the line rental is expressed in rands. Firstly, I'm going to convert my cents into rands. And I know that 80 cents is equal to 80 divided by 100 rands. In other words, 80 cents is equal to 0.80 rands. But we could also decide to change our rand values into cents. Let's do that one. We know that one rand is the same thing as 100 cents. So in other words, 20 rand is the same thing as 20 times 100 cents. So therefore 20 rand is equivalent to 2000 cents. The operators in the flow diagram give us the function rule. So take another look at this flow diagram, focusing on the operators. The input variable is multiplied by 80 cents and then we add on 20 rand. Right, now we can write the function rule as a proper algebraic formula. 
Right, now we're able to rewrite this function rule as a proper algebraic expression. To start off with, I'm going to assign my input variable as x and my output variable as y. Now, if I convert all of my units, as in this case, to rands, my algebraic expression will be given by y is equal to 0,8x plus 20. And if I convert all of my units to cents, then my algebraic expression or formula will be given by y is equal to 80x plus 2000. Now it's important to note that both of these formulae are equivalent. It's just that their output values will be given in different units. Look carefully at the formulae. For now, I'm going to use this formula written in RAND. Because we know the function rule or formula, we can calculate the total cost per month for any duration of calls. Remember, our formula is given by y is equal to 0,8x plus 20. So if we made a total of 10 minutes worth of calls during the month, then our total monthly cost would be 10 times 0,8, which is 8, plus 20, which is a grand total of 28 rand. If we made 11 minutes worth of calls, then our total monthly cost would be 11 times 0,8, which is 8,8 plus 20 which is 28,80 Rand. And if we made a total of 12 minutes worth of calls, then our total monthly cost would be 12 times 0,8, which is 9,6 plus 20, which is 29,60 Rand. To calculate the monthly cost, or Y, I substitute the input variable into the formula. Now let's calculate how much it would cost me if I made 30 minutes worth of calls in a month. Well, in that case, I need to substitute my input variable of 30 into the formula. And 30 times 0,8 is 24, plus 20 rand for my line rental is a total of 44 rand for the month. To understand why this is an example of a linear function, let's analyze the values in our table. For a change in the input values from 10 to 11 of one minute, the change in the output values is 0, 0,8. For another change in the input values, this time from 11 to 12, which is another minute change, the change in our output values is again 0, 0,8. So that we can see for every one minute change in the input values, the corresponding change in our output values is always 0, 0,8 Rand. Let's check if the rate of change remains the same as our input values change from 12 to 30 minutes. The change from 12 to 30 minutes is a total change of 18 minutes. Let's now check what the change is in our output values. So in other words, we need to go 44 Rand minus 29 Rand 60, which is a total change in our output values of 14 Rand 40. But have a look at this. If we divide this by the 18 minutes that we changed in the input variables, we can see that for each minute we changed the input variable, the change in the output value was also 0,8. So the rate of change is constant. I can add 0, 0,8 18 times to 29 Rand 60 to get to 44 Rand. So the cost per minute of my telephone calls is 0, 0,8 Rand or 80 cents. We therefore say that this function has a rate of change of 0, 0,8. And for any function where the rate of change is constant, you can be assured that that function is a linear function. Now you need to make note of this. A function whose rate of change is constant is called a linear function. Now working with tables of values can become very cumbersome and tiring. It makes far more sense to try and find a shortcut 
to the information. And of course, the formula of the function represents one such shortcut. In our example of the telephone costs, the formula is y is equal to 0,8x plus 20. And we know that x represents the input variable or the duration of the calls that we made, while y represents the output variable or the total cost of using the telephone. Now, we can at any time calculate any value we like. So in a sense, all of the values that we could represent in a table are packaged in this one short, neat formula. For example, do you want to work out how much the total cost would be if you were to make 300 minutes of calls within a particular month? Using the formula, we can substitute in our values and find the final answer. Remember, our formula is given by y is equal to 0,8x plus 20, and the duration of calls that we are making is 300 minutes. So therefore, y is equal to 0,8 times 300 plus 20. Therefore, y is equal to 240 plus 20. Therefore, our final answer is equal to 260 Rand. That was really simple, wasn't it? Can you think of any other situation where we can use a linear function to describe the relationship between the input and the output variable? Imagine visiting a game park. The number of people multiplied by the cost per person plus the amount for the vehicle gives the total entrance fee. If you and your friends go on a school outing or on a church camp, you might rent a vehicle. For car rental, the number of kilometers traveled is multiplied by the cost per kilometer and then the rental fee is added. This gives the total account. The family of functions we call linear functions all have formulae that look like this. So in general, we can write the formula for a linear function like this y is equal to mx plus c, where y always represents the output values, x always represents the input values, m always represents the rate of change, and c always represents a constant. So in other words, the output value is equal to the rate of change multiplied by the input value plus a constant. It is important to be able to recognize linear functions. So take a look at the following formulae. Every one of these formulae can be nudged into the form y equals mx plus c. Look carefully. See if you can do it. So linear functions can be given in different formats, but they can all be written in the form y equals mx plus c. In this lesson, we've used a flow diagram, formula, and table of values to investigate the properties of linear functions. In the next lesson, we're going to have a look at the shape of the graph of linear functions. <laughs>